from Donizetti to Mickey Finn's nightclub. There's no more difficult life in show business than a stand-up comedian's life. It is a hard, frustrating, insecure business, but there's no end to aspiring comedians who share at least the element of hope. Bill Bauer works as an ambulance driver for a suburban hospital. Sue Halloran is an ex-dancer who is studying broadcasting and works at Fresh Air Radio. Louie Anderson is a child care specialist for a local children's home. Members of the workaday world during the week. But on Saturday night, they shed these identities to pursue another ambition. For it is then that they have their chance to stand on stage and be recognized as entertainers in the form of stand-up comedians. This all happens at Mickey Finn's nightclub a showcase and training ground for aspiring comics. They're led by Jeff Gerbino, the only professional of the group, and master of ceremonies for the weekly performances. Mickey Fins is not the ultimate club to play. People think that we say, come on down to Fins, it's a great place. That's not what we're selling. We're selling the fact that these are comedians, and we are developing our act. And you can get in on that and watch it and be part of it. It is not the best place to play. But at the same time, it's almost the only place for us to play on a weekly basis. The type of people we get down at fans performing, the comedians, there's no way you can describe them other than uh, some kind of a large zoo <laughs> of personalities. But it doesn't span all that much. It's basically people who are frustrated, I think, with their work. And they decided that they want to do something else. And that this is the nearest, most accessible form for them to do it. Number one. Say, hey, where'd you ever get a nickname like Stumpy? <laughs> Comedy for me is a good release for what I do during the week because there's not a lot of real person-to-person -person communication in uh, in the animal field. Most of the people you meet are either hurt or sick and you don't really see them under their best terms. So when, I, uh, when I'm off, I like to do, I like to do uh, something where I can communicate with people. I started out in comedy um, to get recognition. I think the reason that uh, I did it was I got a lot of attention from people. I got their, you know, their smiles and their approval. Um, I took everyday situations or real life things and blew them out of proportion. They were funny and people like it. Well, and I found out I couldn't dance anymore. I was trying to find some way of performing. And I found out that um, it's a lot easier to lift your leg on stage and open your mouth and be funny. <laughs> it was a very hard kind of transition to make. But I thought it would help my radio or TV work that I want to do just to get up an audience and try to get my mouth going. I got so sick of campaign slogans. Hi, I'm a taxpayer just like you. My kids, they go to crummy schools just like yours. Big government, oh, too big for me, just like you. Just like you, just like you. Just. Not one of those guys came out with the real slogan of this campaign. Hi, I'm a multi-millionaire, and I don't know what you people are going through. <laughs> I remember feeling physically sick, just totally nervous, and that went on for about the first 15 times I got up on stage. I, I don't know if it takes a masochistic streak, but you've got to be able to postpone what you think of yourself and people think of you for a while. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it's Fat City Disco. I can remember the first time I went up stage, I was in the bathroom every five minutes. I was going to the bathroom, I was feeling like I wanted to throw up. But my knees were shaking, I stuttered through things. Um, at times there weren't any laughs. Um, that seemed like two to three hours. But when I uh, got done listening to my tape, I found out they were two or three seconds. And, and overall I got many more laughs than I thought I would. Time Magazine ran an article a couple uh, months ago about uh, stand-up com comedy people being insecure people who needed the laugh response to uh, adjust psychologically, but I don't think that's true in my case. They also came across uh, 
the fact, the oddity really, that 85% of the stand-up comedians in the United States are Jewish, and I'm not. And another 10% of our minorities, and I'm, I'm Catholic myself, so I have a good, uh, a good background, I think, for comedy. There's a lot of things for me to draw on. For these young comedians, material can come from almost any source. Inspiration can start with personal stories, politics, television programs, or even life in the Twin Cities. Back to the now, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Trivino's tribute to the Laser Light Show. Do, 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 do. We don't have to worry, though, because on the home front here, we've got Anita Bryant in the form of a group. The Morality Alert! From St. Paul, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I get the feeling that this great big boat of good ship heterosexuality. And they are s surrounded by the turbulent waters of homosexuality. <laughs> and they're so afraid of losing one of their own kind. Man overboard! They go rushing, rushing, rushing up to the ship, they look over and tumble the snake! Hey, Mikey. He likes it. <laughs> it's very scary when you first get up there. It's just incredibly scary. And you would almost do anything for a laugh. I think I did some things in bad taste at the beginning. You don't know what's bad taste at first anyway. You're just experimenting. The television is such a jungle of stuff, you know, that it's almost impossible to pick anything out that you can really say is, alright, this is good, you know, because when you mishmash the way it is, it's open target for satire, and people say, well, it's easy to pick on, and I always say, well, you know, if it wasn't so lousy, it wouldn't be so easy to pick on, you know. What our generation influenced by, you know, I'm just trying to think, you know, what, what should we say, what would we be able to look back on and say, you know, this... This, this was our generation, you know, and I thought about it. We'll probably have to look back at things like Gilligan's Island and, uh, you know, so Hogan's Heroes, you know, 30 days of the cool Christmas. Oh my god, it's a Twilight Zone. I'm only going to watch till it gets scary. Uh, just at that moment when they come out and they catch you and you're acting like a complete fool and you think you are Christ, just at that one moment, I'd like to go, Scotty, beat me up. <laughs> okay, kids, uh, the reason that I'm really sad is because it's, uh, it's Tubbo's last show, and it's, uh, it's probably the last time you kids are going to have any fun, and the reason it's Tubbo's last show is because the producer said, uh, you're no good anymore, Tubbo, and uh, the producer's prejudice. Remember two weeks ago, kids, when we talked about prejudice? Yeah, uh, we talked about prejudice, and that's when people are uh, prejudiced against your race, uh, your color, your creed, your religion, and your sexual preference. I think I'm sharing some life experiences that can be shared and can be understood, and that maybe people laugh out of just that laughing not to cry type of thing, because I think that it's an, emo it's an emotional feeling that I get. It's a... It's a real feeling that I'm telling people, and I want them to realize that they're not the only ones. And I want to hear the laughter so I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> I like particularly saying the unspeakable things that people are afraid, but it's in everybody's mind, and then you bring it out and people laugh about it, and I think that's real healthy. I think that's the kind of thing where I'm interested in, little less obvious things that we know we all think and feel. Comedy, I think, is an art form, uh, probably more so than most people uh, realize. It takes a long time to put together oh, a 45-minute routine and to get the audience to go with it. And uh, when you've done that, then you've created something, and that's art. Comedy, I'm going to give it about three or four years of a try. If it doesn't work, well, then I can hang it up and say, I gave it a try. And then I can go ahead and be a bookkeeper or something and not be frustrated. Thank you.